Today at the ACC Automotive Technology Program, the students are working in teams to diagnose and repair problems with vehicles that were faulted by the instructors. This exercise simulates what students will face as service technicians and requires them to work together to apply the lessons they've learned in their classroom instruction. We've now started running fault-based exercises with our students to help them develop their critical thinking skills so that they can better diagnose vehicles and know what their next steps will be when they're actually out in the field. All right, customer states the check engine light is on and the vehicle runs rough. All right, let's figure it out. We verified the customer's complaint. The, we started it up, the car was running rough and the check engine light was on, so our next step would be to hook up the wireless diagnostic interface. We uh, checked the check engine code, it was a P0300 for an engine misfire. Our next step would be uh, to do a power balance test to see which cylinder was misfiring. In about 30 seconds of running it, we got about 300 misfires on cylinder one. Well, that's... So that is definitely our problem. After performing the power balance test, we found that cylinder one was misfiring. Now we will need to determine what is causing the misfire. So we know the fuel system's good. Okay, we, so, so must be a spark. Yep. We checked the waveform for the fuel injector, it was okay. Our next step is to check the spark, see if the car is getting a spark. We need to examine the ignition coil for that. Now that we have the ignition coil out, we will test the current running through it. So the waveform for the voltage is incorrect. Um, we got a lot of noise right here. It should be squared even. We're also not getting any current flowing through the spark plug wire. Now that we've determined the coil is the problem, we're getting incorrect current readings through it. The next step is to replace the ignition coil and see if that solves the problem. All right, we got a 2011 Nissan Frontier. Uh, customer states red brake warning lamp is on. Uh, verify customer complaint. So after that, we need to go check the scan tool to see if there's any codes that got pulled up on the vehicle and there was a brake fluid level switch low. Could mean either low brake fluid or an electrical problem. Chris, do you want to see if there's actually sure. brake fluid in the reservoir? Uh, we checked the brake fluid and that looked good, which indicated that there's probably an electrical issue with the sensor. So we got to find the fluid level sensor, which is right here. Our next step would be to test the battery voltage, seeing that if there is any sort of low battery voltage, it could result in numerous problems leading us in the wrong direction. We're putting out 14-ish volts, 13-ish volts, which is about normal since it's hooked up to a charger. We then need to check the sensor for proper voltage levels between power and grounds. So we used a test light and hooked it up to ground, going to the power side, hoping that it would light, and it did not light. After using the scanner, it was determined that there was a complete voltage drop where there shouldn't be. We have to do a ohms test on it to figure out where that connection was being made. The ohm test confirmed that there was little resistance, so the next step would be to disconnect the wiring harness from the computer to maybe find out where that voltage was dropping. We have so many electronic systems, and when we think about our laptops, we think about our smartphones, we think about tablets, these are all the exact same systems that are in our cars today. So I didn't really know what to expect coming into the automotive program, but I can assure tell you that I have learned a whole lot. Coming in, didn't even know how to take a battery out of a car, and just the other day I took out a complete engine and rebuilt it. ACC Auto Tech combines top-notch technical education with priceless hands-on experience. Students leave the program not only with an associate's degree, but also prepared to hit the ground running in the dynamic and growing field of automotive technology. ACC is unique among automotive programs as 100% of students are employed in service departments and repair facilities while they are in school. Major automotive manufacturers have sponsored ACC as a training provider and have donated millions of dollars of brand new vehicles. Through these programs, students gain experience in cutting edge automotive technology. The coolest car I've got to work on here is the 2015 Corvette Stingray. That was just awesome. We pretty much got our hands on that before a lot of people in general. So that was an awesome experience to, to be a part of. While they're finishing up their second year of school at ACC, they're working part-time with one of my techs as a tech apprentice. As soon as they graduate, we make sure they're ready to go on their own when they feel comfortable. They go on their own and they give themselves a big raise. I really like it. It's, uh, 
It's an interesting career. It's a lot of fun. I, I learn something new every day. There's never a point in any part of this career where you don't learn something. Whether it be on cars or how to interact with the people you work with, there's a lot for this career to offer you outside of just learning how to work on cars. It's kind of a two-part program with ACC where you get a lot of theoretical um, from them and they give you a lot of hands-on stuff where they have all the, you know, the Tech 2s, the GDS. Uh, if you go into other companies like Nissan or Honda, they have those other computer programs for them as well. So you, you get to work on the newest cars with the newest software programs. So it allows you to get familiar with those before you're here on the job. Um, and then they help give you job placement, which gives you the on-the-job training, which helps then give you the real-world experience. It's definitely cool every year the cars look completely different from the last model and the technology that's going into them is unbelievable. Further and further down the line, can't wait to see what more technology goes into the cars. I do know that there are a shortage of technicians. Technicians are becoming harder and harder to find. That's why we have chosen to grow our own, teaming up with Arapaho Community College to achieve this. For me, just, you know, money-wise, it worked out very well. It had a very convenient location for me. The program was awesome. You know, I was able to graduate, you know, and top the class. I um, had a cool L. Henry scholarship program there where I was able to win a toolbox, so that was really awesome for me. So there's just a lot of opportunities and a lot of knowledge to take away from the school. We replaced the ignition coil with a new unit, cleared the check engine code, and it did not come back on. The waveform for the spark looked correct after that. So we came in, this car was misfiring. We tested it out uh, with check ignition pattern. Did a power balance test. We diagnosed the coil on cylinder one was bad, which was causing the misfire. Replaced the coil, checked the ignition pattern. The code went away and the car is running as it should be. This terminal system here and the wire over here. So that's where the problem has been isolated to. Our next step was going to be to pull the wiring harness off from the ECU and check for voltage at the ECU. There was indeed voltage coming out of the ECU, which determined that the problem was somewhere within the wiring harness. Let's go ahead and talk to the customer and see what they want us to do, because it'll probably involve replacing the entire wiring harness or trying to repair where it's been spliced together somehow. This industry is moving towards a blend of somebody who wants to move towards that engineering degree but wants to still be able to work with their hands. They want to be able to get up and they want to move around. They want to diagnose. They don't want to be stuck at a desk all day. The service hybrid system light was on on this particular vehicle. It's crucial to go through and check this battery because it is the supply of the entire vehicle. Where I want to go with my future is opening up my own shop that kind of specializes in modern electrical vehicles. They give you the fundamentals of you know, electrical circuits and stuff like that, but then they spend a great deal of time as far as you getting out there and putting your hands on vehicles and actually testing each and every component. You really have to be the one that can critically think and execute a plan, figure out what's wrong with the car. If I were starting right now, that's what I would be focusing on is uh, troubleshooting skills and critical thinking. Students need this background, they need the education, especially in the electronic circuits, to be able to diagnose and work on the cars that we're seeing today and the cars that we're gonna see in the next five years and 10 years and 20 years down the road. Before I started this program, I would have had no idea where to even start with this car and now I know how to diagnose it and find the problem and fix it. Good job, guys. Good job. Yeah.